Hi everybody. So this video is going to be a little different. I've never made a video really like this, but I've had a couple of you guys reach out to me asking for more of an in-depth biography about kind of just, just wanting to hear more of my story. And it makes me realize that I've had this YouTube channel for, God, I don't even know how long now, maybe like seven-ish years. And it's been a wild ride as far as my musical journey goes and just life in general. But I didn't really have a plan for, for making a YouTube channel. And in the beginning, I just started making songs and covering stuff. There's lots of ways you can go about YouTube. You know, like some people just do this, what I'm doing right now, just talking to their followers. And it's something that I haven't really done. And I guess because it feels vulnerable, but I really want to share my story with you guys. And I feel like there's wisdom and the trials and tribulations that I've went through. And I'm hoping that you guys can possibly skip some of the pitfalls that I went through. And maybe you can learn a thing or two from here and then go back and apply it to your own lives. Definitely, if you have aspirations to be a full-time musician or uh, somebody that does music for a job in any capacity, I'm 33 years old now, if you guys are wondering how old I am. And I've got my start into music about a decade ago when I was 23 and it's been pretty crazy. I guess we'll start from the beginning. So we'll start with an introduction as I feel this is something I probably should have given you guys a long time ago, but maybe felt silly doing it. But now many of you have asked for it. So I just want it to be available for whoever wants it. And uh, yeah, and I think there'll be kind of a guide built into it for sort of how to become a full-time musician. So let's start from the beginning ish. I want to start here because I want to explain kind of how I had a late start into music. When I was 11 years old, I had a dream to be a professional skateboarder. And that was pretty much what I pursued religiously from 11 to about 23. And there's pretty hard stop right at uh, 23, where I sort of became obsessed, like something clicked in me and I, I really did become obsessed with singing. And then a professional friend of mine explained to me that I have a very rare voice type, which you guys have maybe seen if you've been here around. And yeah, so then when he explained that to me and how that kind of mattered, I just got more obsessed. And it was interesting because I probably always had aspirations to be a singer, but as a bass, you know, a, a natural uh, bass, pretty rare thing. And it's something that kind of felt like a curse, honestly, for the beginning of my you know, like my teenage years where I tried to sing probably on the radio occasionally and it just didn't work. And I didn't know why, I just thought I was a bad singer and there's nothing I could do about it. So yeah, 23, I, I became obsessed with singing and uh, I didn't know what to do. So I tried out for the university choir that I graduated from UCF, University of Central Florida. I tried out for the collegiate choir and didn't get in. They said I couldn't be in the choir because I didn't know how to read music and they couldn't let people into like kind of a professional, you know, collegiate slash professional level choir if I didn't know how to read music. But the professor there suggested that I try it out for the acapella groups. So I did. And then after I auditioned for the acapella groups, it was pretty insane. I guess I was lucky now at this point where every group there i was like the number one callback for the whole school and uh it was pretty wild because even some of the groups that were like all female groups they were willing to make an exception to uh have me join the group and i guess as i was saying it was because i was a natural bass at that time i mean i still am a natural bass but now things are a little different but yeah so that was something that they just never really heard at that moment uh, none of the groups had ever came across something like that as it's pretty rare. So this was truly an incredible, surreal experience and really some of the most fun I've ever had. I highly recommend it if you're looking to get into singing and you're in college or even if you're in high school. And it's really was a beneficial factor for my growth. It helped me to develop my ear. It helped me to get some control of my voice and made some pretty good friends that some I still am pretty good friends with even today. So 
yeah, I'd highly recommend it if you're looking into getting into singing. Although my situation was a bit odd. Um, it, your situation may not be exactly the same as what mine looked like, where it became like so aggressively the opposite of like what I experienced my whole life. Like as I tried to sing popular music and I couldn't do it. Now suddenly I was like in demand because I could sing something that nobody else really could do the same. So it was like immediately kind of, I mean like within a year or two into doing collegiate acapella, I started getting calls to do professional work, professional acapella groups, even like at Disney and Universal and, and that type of thing. And even some groups kind of like fly me around to fill in just as a sub. So it felt pretty surreal because I was just like, you know, I was having so much fun singing for free in these collegiate groups. And then very shortly, what felt like, like after I was getting, you know, kind of used to doing this, still not even quite, in my opinion, just getting calls to do it professionally. And this is around the time where Pitch Perfect came out and Pentatonix and all that. And it's fascinating how, you know, it kind of, it's a small world in that, in acapella, because now I'm friends with most of those people and <laughs> that have been involved with those like Deke, Sharon and, and Avi. Shout out to Deke and Avi. But yeah, so this was great. I really enjoyed it. But something felt lacking where it was like, I... I had aspirations to be a singer, you know, and now I'm a professional singer, so to speak. But in reality, I was kind of only just singing bass, so I was really more of like a professional hummer. And uh, this was still really fun. And, you know, I maybe occasionally got to sing a harmony part, but pretty much I was on the tonic singing bass. And I really enjoyed it. I'm not trying to act like I didn't enjoy it, but I guess I had an epiphany and realized, like, this wasn't going to turn into something that like I'm suddenly going to be in a position where I'm going to get to develop my skills as an all around singer. And that was definitely the real dream that I had. It was never really my dream to be a bass singer, but it's something I sort of fell into and was pushed aggressively like in that direction and very thankful for all those times and opportunities. But I guess what I'm saying is I was faced at one point kind of like a fork in the road i graduated ucf and i was doing you know bass acapella professionally at disney and then i got a call from a group in minnesota who wanted to hire me with a contract for many years and i remember i called my mom and told her about it and i was like i guess this is it you know like i i graduated college and now i get to go be a singer for you know full time forever and this is gonna be great and my mom I have to really attribute it to my mom that I didn't take that contract because she's like, do you really want to live in Minnesota? It's like too cold. Like you hate the cold. And I'm like, I do hate the cold. <laughs> so then I didn't go. Um, I went to like fill in for them for like the week or whatever festival they were doing. But then I came back and uh, I was fortunate enough to get a full ride scholarship after I graduated UCF to go to another college down the street called Rollins College probably haven't heard of it but although it is the first college that was ever made in Florida it's from like the 1800s and Chris Kirkpatrick from like NSYNC or Backstreet Boys or whatever he was in went at one point a couple other big heads I think like maybe was it who is it Love? I think Love may have might have gone there too but yeah so I go to Rollins and I'm studying classical voice on a full ride scholarship and then about a year or two in I get a call from Street Corner Symphony, and if you don't know Street Corner Symphony, they're a pretty awesome acapella group, still a bunch of good friends of mine, and they called me to go tour with them, and they were just on the sing-off, which is how Pentatonix got their start in Home Free, and they were on season two, and they had gigs, you know, booked into like, you know, the, the next year, so I was going to Rollins uh, studying classical voice, and then I decided to drop out of Rollins to get back into acapella because I just really liked all these guys. They seemed cool and um, they seemed like they had a lot going on even outside of acapella. So it seemed like there's more opportunities to really like explore being a singer. And they were in Nashville, which I thought was cool. So I dropped out of Rollins to go join this group. And then I toured with them for about maybe six months. And then they replaced me with uh, Armand, who's still in the group right now. Armand's a better fit 
than than I was and I'm glad that they they replaced me with him at this point but back at that time I was pretty upset and, and sad about it and it felt like you know my life was over and I was just feeling very sad so I went to Hawaii to hang out with a friend of mine and I stayed on his couch for about a month and just tried to like re-figure out my life and I remember I saw a kid you know a dude busking I don't know if you know what busking is, it's a street performing. I saw a dude street performing and he was, you know, not like God's gift to music or anything. He was, he was okay. And I saw he had a little case full of money and a couple pretty girls around him. Something just kind of clicked in me where I was just incredibly inspired and I spoke with him briefly. And then pretty much after talking to him, I bought the exact same amp that he had and I didn't even have a guitar yet or know how to play guitar, but I didn't care. I knew I had to become a busker because it just felt like, okay, if I learn how to play guitar and I'm going to just play in the street like this, I can make money, I can play whatever I want and I could practice um, kind of, you know, breaking out of, you know, whatever baritone range maybe I can get to as a bass. And I think it'll be a good time. I can, you know, hang out in places like Hawaii or just wherever. After leaving Hawaii, I moved back in with my parents and I started practicing guitar every day. And then after about a year, I worked up the courage to go out and try to street perform and busk. And I remember I was scared shitless out of my mind the first time I went out. I remember just telling myself the most horrible things you could think of, like, you're not ready, you only know a few songs, you're gonna sound terrible, you're gonna ruin everyone's day. And I pushed through this mental battle and I went out on Park Avenue in Winter Park, Florida, and I tried it. And to my surprise, it was a wonderful day. I had some pretty girls come up to me and be nice and give me their money. <laughs> and uh, from there, I just went all out and uh, started doing it all the time. And so, yeah, then at that point, I became a busker. I busked probably on and off for about six-ish years. So I started busking for a couple years and then I was faced with a hardship where my parents weren't well and I had to become my older brother's primary caretaker. My brother has a pretty severe mental disability so I took care of him for a couple years and I ended up having to move into like a project level apartment in like a really horrible area and I took care of my brother as his primary caretaker, my older brother for about two years and at night I would go out to downtown Orlando to play music and that was what I was doing to pay the bills and surprisingly like music really got me through it because this was like another very very low point for me in my life and very challenging just feeling like not sure like how this is going to go if I'm going to have to just like take care of him forever and then you know eventually I was able to get him into an assisted living facility and after that I took out a small loan and I bought a luxury van, which is what I'm still in right now. And it's a very beautiful van. I love it. It's got like a shower in here and all the amenities of an apartment. I got another video or two on here where you can see it. But yes, yeah, so then I bought the van and then from there I went to Berkeley in 2017. It was wild going from uh, taking care of my brother in you know, such a horrible situation and going from that to a situation that's literally was like the opposite it was like Berkeley was a surreal experience it, it really felt like just incredibly fun and getting to learn from these industry professional people like you know I got to meet Charlie Puth, Pharrell, Fall Out Boy, The Fray, Phineas came in and showed us how he made Bad Guy on, on Logic Pro on his laptop pretty insane and then I made some friends there who really changed my life and I still make music with some of them and play with them even out here in LA where I currently live. After a couple years at Berkeley, I dropped out to tour with Eddie Nock, who some of you might know that already, but Eddie Nock was in Elvis Presley's original band. He was his background vocalist for over a thousand shows and he can be heard on a lot of Elvis's hit songs, singing the, the tenor harmony parts. And the tour manager found me on YouTube actually. So shout out to you guys for helping me in my algorithm and 
ultimately that was how they found me so they hired me to sing solo and backgrounds for their touring elvis tribute show and arenas all around europe so that was pretty insane coming from the streets to literally arenas that like rihanna and lady gaga and artists of that caliber performed at and just getting to see europe for the first time and such a wonderful way it was really you know just another surreal experience and you know i was also kind of scared shitless like the first show like because it was literally like you know the second song of the show i had to sing solo to like thousands of people and the malmo arena in sweden and or was that denmark the malmo arena yeah so you know i was dying like uh and we didn't have any rehearsal or anything like that it was just like immediately like professional just like straight in and they sent me the whole show on itunes so i had to learn the whole show all my parts just from listening to it that was pretty brutal too so just to to have to do that and then go try it out the first time on a arena stage it felt really crazy and that was a wonderful time i, I really enjoyed that show and from that show i moved back to florida to work for an agency that hired me to perform at Disney again, but this time as a singer guitarist, playing anywhere from Disney Springs, Hard Rock Live to just local bars. And this was a very fulfilling experience at this time for a while as I grew a lot as an entertainer, but somehow I still felt unfulfilled, like there was something missing. And from Orlando working at Disney, I left and I moved to Nashville because I had aspirations to move further into original music and I heard that Nashville was better for that. So I moved to Nashville and it was better for it. There were a lot of opportunities to do original shows and I played some of them. And I also got to play like on Broadway a little bit here and there. But what I found in Nashville was there wasn't a lot of money like as far as like uh, even comparing it like Orlando to Nashville it felt like there's more money in Orlando and there was a, a strong push in in you know the best venues in Nashville to play this Broadway playlist and I just didn't feel like doing that playlist I don't know like I, I learned it and I, I did it a bit but like it just wasn't what I wanted to do I, I wanted to do the music I wanted to do and then I wanted to do original music and for the original shows, a lot of them just weren't paid. So it just started to feel like, okay, maybe Nashville's not it. And then I remember I spoke with a good friend of mine on the phone, and on the phone with him, he was like, well, why don't you try out LA? You know, and it's funny because he doesn't even live in LA, but he's like, why don't you try out LA? And so after, you know, I thought about it, and after I was on the phone with him, I uh, pretty much that night just started driving to LA and moved moved to LA and uh, that's where I am now currently and I'm really glad that I decided to make that move because you know although it was a grind out here it has been the best thing for my career in all aspects I now have one of the best agents in the country who flies me to sing at great venues all around the country uh, I'm singing at Boston at the end of the month and I play a lot in Portland and Seattle but then, you know, all around here as well, San Diego. And yeah, I'm also super pumped because I've recently started an original band and some truly incredible players in my band. I like to brag, our drummer is a girl who's played with ZZ Top, toured with them a bit, and she's like a literal rock star. So currently we are rehearsing regularly in efforts to create the craziest show that, you know, the world's ever seen. It's kind of the goal and stay tuned for that because it's coming soon. So this is a brief breakdown of my story, but what I feel is valuable in here is that one can learn to sing, uh, play guitar in a matter of years, and you couldn't be playing music full time for a living, you know, because if I did it, there's no reason you guys can't do it. I'm not special in any way uh, other than maybe being born a bass, but honestly that has been kind of like a curse uh, here and there at times. My my agent out here, he uh, he doesn't really like bass. He tells me not to do it when I when I do shows for him because I, I get hired for a lot of corporate 
band like wedding type things where he just wants me to be like Justin Timberlake but honestly I love the push that he gives me to to do that because it really you know puts my skills and my practice to the test and it's been amazing it's been an amazing year because I feel like I've really grown a lot as a pseudo tenor so to speak and so yeah you know I'm just I'm really thankful for the push from him because I have put in the work with the practice and learning how to sing classically and then contemporarily at Berkeley and putting all that together with techniques like mixed voice I'm somehow able to get by and, and sing tenor now for a living <laughs> so um, it's pretty fascinating even for me to see how that's kind of happened because it seems to be working pretty well I feel pretty good vocally it's been very fulfilling to get to do that at this point and then now to finally have this original band it just feels like this is really what I've always wanted to be you know doing what I'm doing now so just very thankful that I didn't just like keep doing you know bass acapella I, I would you know pushed myself out of that circle where I, there's a strong pull for me to do it like I turned down opportunities to sing like on cruise ships around the world and things like that to go sing on the street because I knew that it wasn't going to give me what I wanted and uh I'm really glad I did that you know looking back so um I'm sure not everybody probably wants to be a street performer or a busker so to speak but it really you know the combination of that and buying a luxury van and and you know moving into that and cutting down my bills that's really been what has changed my life and it's it's been busking really was the key that uh, I put together all of the things I learned from the two schools I attended and the lessons I took and, and the stuff I've learned on YouTube and just went out, you know, for like four to five hours on average, uh, you know, and uh, just put it all into play, you know, put the practice into play and uh, got experience playing for people and talking to people and, and learning how to be an entertainer. and. It's something that is truly, you know, just available for anyone that wants to do it. You know, you just go to like wherever you can, wherever that's around you. I've, I've busked, had a really good time busking in Winter Park, Florida, downtown Orlando, Key West, Florida, but also outside of Florida. There, my parents lived in my parents lived in Ohio for a while, and Riverside Crossing Park Plaza. I think that's what it was called uh, in Dublin, Ohio. That was one of the best places I've ever busked. Really great energy on, on the Riverside Crossing Park. Uh, Pearl Street Station in Boulder, Colorado. Boston Commons is really great. Venice Beach is, California is okay. It's not really that great. You know, it's decent. Like I said, maybe busking is not what you want to do forever, but it can be a wonderfully rewarding stepping stone. And you'd be surprised, you know, some of our favorite artists have gotten their start as buskers like Ed Sheeran, Andy Grammer, David Kahn. <laughs> and yeah, if you don't know how to play or sing at all, you can learn on YouTube or many apps. Like I, I used Musician personally to learn how to play guitar in the beginning when I didn't know how to play at all. And I suggest hiring a teacher because you really have to protect your vocal health. You know, you only get one set of chords. so be careful with your vocal cords and then you know get out in the street and go play go go to your local park or wherever and just try it out you know and you might find that you get addicted to it and it might change your life because that's what happened to me that's what happened to Ed Sheeran that's what happened to Andy Grammer and I would say definitely get a teacher if you can afford it because that'll help you to learn faster and just take care of yourself protect your health your vocal health other than that this is another aspect of it that is maybe a little less tangible. I'd say a big part of this maybe that you could have all these things and then still maybe be stuck is uh, developing the self-confidence to really get out there and try it. Um, I don't know, I have to admit there was some part of me even since the beginning, like before I even did acapella, where like I told you something clicked and I just felt like I had to do music, I had to sing and I, I couldn't do anything about it. It just felt like it happened. and. I knew I needed to do it and I, I didn't know how it was going to look down the road if it was really going to turn into like a career or not but it just there was something in me that I had to do it and I'm really glad that I followed that yes yeah, so I just wanted to say thank you guys for everything thank you for watching and 
you know, people that have been here for a long time, you know, super, super appreciate you. If this is your first time checking out my stuff, if this is your first time here, welcome. And I hope that you consider subscribing and checking out some of my material. Uh, I got music that's available on all the streaming platforms and I play shows in LA a lot, but like all over the world, like I said, I'm playing in Boston at the end of the month, but also, you know, got lots of shows in California. So yeah, if there's anything else that you guys would like to learn from me, any specific techniques, uh, anything you want to hear me sing, let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer all of you guys. Now get out there and follow your dreams. Because at the end of the day, you know what they say. If we want something in this world, we have to go and make it on our own. So don't you dare waste it. Cause everybody makes it on their own. Still got to make it on